I'm really glad you mentioned that. Okay, can people see my VS Code editor now? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So you couldn't see, but I was I was just I typed git status to make sure there wasn't anything I had not committed. In fact, I should just kill and restart the server. That's never a bad thing to do after a break, just to make sure I haven't made some change and forgotten about it. So now I've confirmed the server runs. We have hello world. Um, there's no outstanding migrations. I don't think, uh, I know there's some sort of command line to check to confirm what migrations have been applied. In fact, we can do a quick Google for that. Let's see here, migrate dash dash list, show migrations. Let's try one of those and see what the, how those work real quick. So show migrations, that is a lot of information. I probably also, if I have the app name there, that would help. Let's see how they do it here. Show migrations, blah, 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 blah. I think you can um, let's, let's show migrations first and then the... And then the app name? Maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's see here. Perfect. So that's a great command. Um, you know what? I'm just going to throw that in the notes somewhere. Especially as you start working on your personal projects, checking in to make sure you don't have an unapplied migration. That's, that's, that's a great gotcha right there is having a migration you haven't applied. So now we really know everything about our program is in a good state. The database is up to date, no migrations are unapplied. We're, we're, we restarted the server, um, we're cooking. And then the next step is to connect React and Django. And, and Ben, thank you for, for your help there. Um, for sharing that in the chat. And I'm also gonna take a look at the guide code from yesterday. If I can get my browsers right. So I'm gonna just look at the code we wrote yesterday. And jumping back to our to-do list, Django config, there's a bit more to do, but here, we're now at, at uh, setting up the static files directory. We have to create the static directory and we have to set it in settings py. And then we'll also have to um, configure v to build the act app for Django. And here we'll want to set uh, build output directory and set base path for URLs. But we'll start with Django and go to settings py. And thank you for bearing with me. So I think our static URL is what we want, but then we do have to add this static files directories um, variable. Should probably be single quote. And then we also have to create this directory. And let me make sure that I create this in the right place. And I think I'm going to double check the base directory very quickly. C 
So I want to say that creating it, the static directory at the top level here with the Django app is correct. I'm not a hundred percent and uh, we will see once we, we get it because if something goes wrong, then we'll know we need to put it somewhere else. And if anyone knows in advance, uh, please let me know. I think we'll be okay, but we'll see. Same level as manage PY. I think that's Perfect. how you did it. Yeah, no, it's totally how I did it yesterday. Uh, I wasn't completely sure if the, uh, using a, a Django app would affect some path stuff and need the static directory to live somewhere else. No, the static directory is going to need to be in the, the biggest server folder. So alongside Perfect. Shopify. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So we have those steps done in Django. And really the last step is test that this works with React. So we'll come back to that one. And the next step for us is to set up the React stuff. And I am gonna move through this relatively quickly because we covered it yesterday. Um, and because there's nothing there's not a lot of excitement around build stuff. Um, actually, so there was a great question. Configuration, project configuration, project structure, they're notoriously frustrating and time consuming. That's why normally the junior engineer on a team does not do that. It's going to be the senior person on the team who sets it up and then everyone else kind of follows that pattern. I think a good rule of thumb is like, as we build this out, take some time and read through the Vite docs a little bit to at least have a little understanding of each of what these configuration options do. Don't spend too much time. The Vite docs also are not the best. And unfortunately, none of the JavaScript docs for any of the JavaScript build tools are any good. Webpack, Babel, uh, whatever it is, they all are terrible in their own way. So you want to spend a little time so you have some idea of what this is, but you don't want to go too deep. And with configuration stuff, the other rule of thumb is don't change things. Because to be honest, it it's like when you're putting together a configuration, you'll spend like an hour and a half reading docs and then you'll write that one line to connect the two pieces and then you move on and never touch it. Um, so that's the best advice I can give in terms of kind of productivity is don't change things, but also do read a little bit, especially with JavaScript, the configuration build tools are really what makes front end stuff so powerful these days. So if you start now, so that like six months, a year from now, you have some comfort with these front end build tools that will actually put you in a really strong spot on the job market and, and in your career um, because they are so challenging to work with, but it's not something that happens overnight. Um, and even when you're experienced, like when I'm learning something new, I find a config that someone else has written and then I set it up and I don't touch it because until I understand how it works, because it's so easy to break this stuff. So that was a lot of chatting, but we've set up our Vite stuff. And that's really, I think all the config, there's a little more config we need. Those aren't as critical, but they're good to have. Um, note that this React plugin, that's from on the command line when we run that npm create meet command and we select react. That's what adds this in here. And at some point we'll show you how to set up different configs for development and production, but it's nice to kind of have a production config as, as your default config, um, especially for our purposes. So now that's set up and fingers crossed, um, we can run that let me open up another terminal here 
and go to the client directory and we'll make this blue. And I think I also will, I'll wait for that setting stuff because we haven't tested it out yet and then I'll add it. And now in our client directory, let's do NPM run build, which is running this v build script from package.json, which is what transpiles our JavaScript. And if we're lucky, it now all lives in the static directory, which it does. Index.html has been copied. It took the one that was here and copied it and put it here. Uh, we have not done anything with a watch script, Gabo, uh, not yet. Um, Mariko, great question. The empty outer source map build options. So I think what the empty outer option does is make sure that an old build is deleted. The source maps um, help with Chrome Dev Tools. Hey, yeah, I just up? have a question uh, on in the build object. Uh, does the empty outers and source map need to be in there, or does it matter? Oh, I see what you're saying. Thank you so much. You are absolutely right. I misunderstood. That is where they belong. I was looking at the guide code from yesterday, and I got it wrong. Um, they do belong in there. So by the way, this is actually, so to do like a meta analysis of that mistake that I just made, all this stuff is an object. Um, I'm going to comment this out to make sure I don't do anything silly. Comment on line seven. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yep, totally. So this is an object. And then here we're passing that object in as an argument. And this should work if I run this build command again. Let's see how we do. Yeah. Um, I would need to double check the Vite docs, but I'm pretty sure if this is in the guide code from the other day, as part of the build properties on, on, on build, then that's where they need to go. Um, this doesn't really solve that problem, but it's one way. Um, what you can do, we haven't talked a lot about JavaScript documentation, but you can like use JavaScript documentation to define what this object should look like and your editor will help you even though the language doesn't. Um, and this is an example, by the way, of how like we could start, we could write another build config for development and then have a bit of conditional logic that switches between the two. Kayla, yes. I just had a quick question just to make sure I know what to check for to make sure the build was um, working properly. But um, I know you said that we have to check if the index.html uh, lives in the, the server directory and what else are we looking for? That's a great question. Yeah, there's a couple things. Uh, the first check is that index.html should be moved over. The next is that in this assets directory, we should see a bunch of CSS and JavaScript files that are very difficult for us to read. But then the real check is we should now, like we should update Django to actually, now that we've stuck our bundled React JavaScript application, you know, over in our, our server project, 
let's host that and make sure that that's working. And that's what really confirms that like the paths in our front end code of where to find image assets and things like that are working. So I think that's the, the next step for us. And let me go ahead and, and do that now. Um, yeah, no, that's a great question. And I'm going to, again, look at our guide code from yesterday and we're gonna update um, a view function. And let me go ahead and close out these files that, that we don't need. Let's see, we don't need the vconfig, I don't think. We don't need that, we don't need that. I'll leave those. And I want to now look at our views in Controversial Foods and our homepage. And I'm probably going to want to import, um, we might use a JSON response soon. We don't really need the REST framework yet, um, but it's nice to have. So I'll just add that those now. But then here, what we want to do is, I think I'm just going to add a print statement just for logging purposes. And we'll call this React app. I'm not sure if React app is really the best word, but it captures what this is doing. It's the index.html page that is, is mounting, that our JavaScript code is running on and our React app is mounting to. Actually, maybe I'll just rename that to homepage. So I feel like React app is a little confusing. So now the real test is, let's see here, invalid syntax. You're missing the import before. It oh ends. yeah, thank you. That would do it. You know, I'm not even using that yet, so I'm not even going to worry about it. And we're not using that either. So I'm gonna follow my own advice and not add things that we're not yet using. Okay, so now we really know that stuff is working. And clicking on this, we know our React code is running. We know it's grabbing the image asset from our server. We saw this issue yesterday, which we'll fix in a moment. Um, and it's not the worst thing to refresh the page and look at the network requests. Um, there are a bunch of them here, but we can see what's going on. We're grabbing those JavaScript assets and image assets and it should be the very first request is to index.html. And I think I just have something in the network tools um, in dev tools that's not quite showing all of them. And then if we look at our server, we see the Django server is receiving all those requests from our React app that's running in the client to get all these different things. Static assets this, static assets that, and, and so on. And just to re refresh, um, let's quickly add our build script. And now that's running. And to test that out, we can fix the issue that we saw the other day with the V JavaScript file. 
I'm sorry, with the v image asset, where I believe here we want to import V logo from and let me make sure that that exists. It's in the public folder. Thank you so much. And then over here, let's use that. And now if we go to the website, things should work and the Vite logo is there. And we know our build script is working, which is, which is great. And now I'm going to commit all this code and, and we have React and Django hooked up again. And we've touched a lot of different things to, to make this happen, but all these pieces, except for the v.svg file, all these pieces were important and part of the same feature. And so now like we've tested all the code that we've worked, that we've written and worked on, and we can see that it's all working end to end. And now I can add it and make a commit. And not only to look at this code as a reference for how to do this next time, but also if something goes wrong and I need to go back in time using Git, I know that this commit has everything in a good state. So I know we're coming up on noon. I think we should just keep rolling and then we can, at lunch, we can kind of decide if we want to continue after lunch or carve out time before stand down, because I know we still have to really get to the heart of things. Kayla, yes. Um, I'm not sure if I, I missed, but um, so when, when we're running, um, when we're running the, the program, are we running it from Django at this point, or are we running it from React? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are, there are two things that are happening now. One is we have all of our client React code and we're writing our source code, app.jsx, the CSS files and things like that. And what the V dev server when we ran npm run dev before under the hood, it was doing like this build step for us of turning this JSX and stuff into a different format of JavaScript that was then being sent to the browser. And we're now doing that step manually because we want to stick that code over in here in the static directory. So we are running that build command. So basically every time you make a change to your front end app to the React code and everything in the client directory, either you need to run the build command to create a new build and, and, and the changes of that code, or you can have the build watch command running, which will just run that build every time you save a file. And that's step one. And that's the build command is what generates all this code that's here. And then step two is we are now using Django to be the web server to host our React application. So you're right that Django is now hosting our React app. And we did that over here where we go to this static directory and we grab this index.html file and this index.html file then has a script tag to this JavaScript file that then is like all of our React JavaScript stuff here. And, and that's how all of that gets hooked up. And then what's happening is, and I wanted to show this in the network tab and I couldn't quite get it to show the way that I wanted. because it should be showing all the requests, but, oh, there it is. Our browser 
makes a request to our server, which is Django. And in fact, let me go over here and let's open, actually, this will be really good. Let's do all of this from the top. So this is the terminal where I have the Django server running. Browser makes a request to the Django server. The Django server gets it. Hey, Chris, yes. Continue your explanation. This is for after. Oh, OK. The Django server gets the request. And then as we know with Django, it's going to look at urls.py to see where this should go. We're routing everything to our controversial foods app. And here, the only route, the home route we have goes to this index views function. Here, what we do is we grab that HTML file, index.html file from the static directory. We open it and we, we read it. We basically parse it into text and send that back to the browser. Okay. That was request one. And then the browser gets that HTML file. And we can take a look at it right here in the sources tab. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that is the index JavaScript file in the elements tab. The browser reads this HTML file line by line. It gets to this point. It's looking for an icon. There is the element attribute saying, here's the URL to get this icon. The browser makes that request. It doesn't quite do it in this order. And the interesting part is right here with the script tag, where we say, here's the URL to get this, slash static, slash assets, slash, and then here is the file name. And then the browser makes that HTTP GET request back to our Django server. And that's right here. And then Django goes to static slash assets slash this. And this is what happened when we ran that build command with Vite. Vite took the nice human readable friendly .jsx code and JavaScript code that we wrote and did all this crazy stuff to it. It minified it, it got rid of white space, it added in things that kind of need to be there but we don't care about. It replaced the JSX with a whole bunch of JavaScript code. Um, like there's all sorts of things going on in here. This is for all intents and purposes, not meant to be read or modified by, by humans. And then, and that has our React program, that has our front end program, and that's sent back to the browser. And then at that point, we've got some JavaScript in the browser starts running it and React is off to the races and doing all of its stuff. And it continues to make requests for like CSS files and image assets and things like that. But at that point, our JavaScript program is really running. So that was a very long answer to a short question, but I hope that that walkthrough was helpful. And I just want to check into and see what, what questions people have. Uh, that was um, that was helpful for me. Um, it I think it's just a lot of connections. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry to keep asking, but just to make sure I understand. So we're going to totally. run the, the Django server um, and then connect to it. And then we're going to run uh, the build in React. And then we'll end up refreshing the browser and you should see the React front end program. Is that right? Exactly. You got it. Oh. You got it. We run the Django server. And that's what the browser is talking to our Django server for everything, mm -hmm. including to load index.html. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it is it is different now. It's really two different programs. Like we have just written a distributed application using a client server architecture. We've got our server program that's running and the client program, we don't run all the time. Like we, we, we give a build of it to the server and the server gives that to the browser. But if we change the client program, 
we have to give the server the new version. And so we start the Django server and then we use this NPM script, either running a build or just running build watch so that when we make a change to the client, the, a new build is made and it's given to the server, which just means sticking it in this directory. And then we see this here in the browser. So okay. yeah, everything in that client directory, all that JavaScript code, all that stuff actually gets run inside of our browsers. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, there are definitely a lot of moving parts here now for sure. And that's one of the challenges with uh, full stack development as they call it. And to be honest, why on a lot of teams, you have a front end team and a back end team, but it's still really valuable to know both of these parts because you, you end up needing to touch both parts of the, of the system. Um, yeah, no, that's a, a, a great question. And at some point, I think we should do a review and Zainab and I will use a, a tablet and, and draw some stuff. I do have my iPad here. It was charging. It is now charged. I can try to get it set up, but I don't want to do that right in, um, the moment. But yeah, great question. And I know some other folks had questions as well. Um, Icarus, yes. I was going to ask if we could go back to our notes where we were doing the pseudo pseudo code and oh, yeah. check off the ones that we have completed so we can see how much progress we've made. Yeah, that's a great call. Totally. So we have for configuring the to build our React app. For Django, we've set the build output directory. We set the base paths. And the testing is really the important part because we need to make sure the two pieces are working. And now that we've done the testing, we can tick both of these off. So we got pretty far. We actually, let's see, I think we set up the user auth model too. We haven't tested that it's working, um, but we got through a lot of steps. We did set up Postgres and we got all the way through that. Um, I love that VS Code does this highlighting. And I think that was most of the Django config. So really what we what we didn't get to were was really the feature work. But we have basically the skeleton because um, so that that's significant and that definitely takes time to set up. And also the more you do it, you kind of have a pattern that you can follow. Um, yes, yes, sir. So uh, can you go back on your view that PY? Are we gonna be having uh like different method pointing to different HTML from React? Great question. No, we are not. What's going to happen now is we might have like def, uh, who am I request? And it might return a JSON response and get user from database. And now I should use probably uh, from REST framework. Uh, we don't need, I, yeah, why not? Decorators import API view. So pretend that we got the user. Um, and let's in fact, let's add a route here. Uh, who am I? Use, who am I? 
I forget about the slashes. I might have the slashes wrong. So we have a route that looks something like this and, and, and a view function that is basically returning some user data. And then in our React code, let's say somewhere in here, we wanted to do something like, and this is, I think we, we do need to find the time to go through this. Maybe it's after lunch or, or before the end of the day, but um, I'm, not, I'm not writing this code right, but uh, I think you get the idea of like Axios get who am I? where we our react program will make api requests to our django server and so our other view routes will be our own api that we create for all of this data just the way that you've been doing this with third party apis now we're going to write that in our django server programs does that help no way. My question was to know, are we going to be using the component pages or whatever that we've been doing on React before? Like the component and the pages were the, uh, what was giving us the HTML that we see on screen, right? Are we still going to be using that in this context right now with the full stack app or not? I see. And do you mean with React router as well and things like that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I understand now. Thank you for explaining. Yes, totally. You will. Because with React Router, maybe we had a home page page and we created a component for it and all of that. Well, what happens now is our React app, we have a home page link and we click on it and React Router changes the URL you're still building a React app just like before. The only difference is really, instead of talking to a third-party API, you're talking to the Django server. And I think too, when we see that, it will, it will, make, it, it will make it a little clearer. And, and, and Luis, I know you had a question as well. Yeah, so following up Kayla's question, um... So we need to have the NPM build running for the React side, and we need to have the Django server running from the backend side. And if we wanted to like restart our server, do we just uh, quit out of the Django side server? And do we also have to quit from the React server as well? Or do we just leave that running and then we just restart the Django server from there on? You can just restart the Django server. And in fact, let me show you right right now. Um, let me fix this error in my view function and just delete this stuff. Um, one more change, sorry. Let's try that again. So here's my server running. In fact, let me just get rid of all of these other terminal tabs and stuff and quit this stuff. I don't have the build running. All I have running is the Django server. Oh, why are we not? Reference here, Axios is not defined because, yeah, because I broke my build. So let me fix that. Yeah, there's too much stuff that I touched here. Let me just go to app.jsx and fix this very quickly, right? Because that doesn't, that never existed. Let's try this again. There we go. So I've got the Django server running. Uh, the React program is working. 
that's all I have running right now. I don't, I'm not running that build watch script or anything like that. Let's say I want to change something in the React app. Let's say here where it says V plus React, we want to say plus controversial foods. Awesome. I've made that change. I've saved my file. I'm not seeing it. Why not? I would assume that you will have to restart the Jingle server, but that's just on me. But just in Francisco's uh, nope. comment on the comment, and I think that he's supposed to uh, restart the NPM build again. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think that's it. Wrong. No, that's a great question. And until now, the way we've done it is we have restarted the server to see those changes. And right now that won't work for us. And the reason is we now have two different programs. I didn't change anything in the server code at all. I went in here and I changed this, right? But this file app.jsx is not what ends up in the browser. To kind of recap this whole story, the browser is running this index, blah, 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 blah. This crazy file that lives here in server static assets. And in fact, if we look in here somewhere, we could probably find Um, V plus React. Yeah, so it's a little hard to see because this code is not meant to be read by humans. But right here, that's like the transpiled version of that code from that JSX file. So we have there this file which is the one that actually gets sent to the browser has not been changed. But if I run npm run build, the build command looks at that .jsx file that I already changed and it creates a new version of this. And that file in fact no longer exists because it's all been deleted. And if we go back into here and now I search for this, now, that change that I made in that other file is, is here. We're essentially taking this JSX file. And when I run the build command, it compiles it and, and creates this file from it. And then this is what gets sent to the browser. And now I don't even need to restart the server because when I refresh the page, we're going to request that JavaScript file from the server that index the, the transpiled one. And that's going to have the change. And so it's a very different workflow from what we've been doing up till now. Okay, so, so if you wanna change something from the front end, like anything like CSS or whatever, um, you just gotta, you don't have to restart the server from the Django side, you just gotta NPM build, run build on, and that's it. Yeah, and if you exactly. And if you want to change something from the back end, um, you just restart the server from the Django side. Do you also, from there on, do you also have to run uh, NPM build again? Like exactly. Build again? Okay, cool. cool yeah, cool. great question. You don't have to, if you change something in the server, uh, you don't have to run NPM build again. NPM build is only working with the JavaScript in this client directory. Cool, I appreciate it, uh, Adam. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Great question. Great question. And then what we do, and this is also why I think this stuff is confusing, is instead of having to remember to run that build command every time, this build watch command will, whenever I go and change a file, rerun the build again. And that's why I think too it can be confusing because that's kind of what we've done with the dev server before. But this build command isn't like, it's not a, a web server or anything like that. And so the watch script is just to help us not have to run that build command manually every time. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question.
Wait, hold on, hold on. So can you do that watch thing again? <laughs> yeah, and totally. Yeah. So we've got here in in the package.json file, by the way, is where all these NPM scripts live. Here's the build command. The watch command is the same thing, except we're using this flag called watch that V has. And it makes our lives a lot easier because if I do this, it runs build, but if I go and change a file, if I go and change a JavaScript file, anything in the client directory, it's watching those files and it runs build again. Otherwise I would just have to do NPM run build. Wow, that, that's change. awesome. That's yeah, awesome. it's great. It's super yeah. cool. It is also confusing because it does seem a lot like a server because it's a running process in, in the shell. So, so I totally get where you're, you're coming from. Um, and, so do and you it is these it? two pieces. Sorry? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting, Adam. So do you recommend no? using the watch instead of build all the time? Yeah, I do. Totally. Yeah. Because I always end up forgetting and it becomes very confusing very fast. I think it's a lot easier to just run the watch script and, and have it there. I got, I got a quick question, guys. So if I were to... Uh... Uh, quit my Django server and then go back to it, do I have to run that npm watch uh, command again or does it still keep running? That's a great question. They are they are not connected to each other. It will keep running. If I kill the Django server, this one is still running in another terminal window. Okay, thank you so much, Adam. This helped a lot. Yeah. I know I, I know I'm gonna run problems into this in the future. I just wanted to make sure that I know what I was gonna I know how to fix it once I get into it. Those are great questions. And, and my guess is it's probably helpful for a lot of the class as well. And I will just give everyone a heads up. It is confusing initially. There are a lot more moving parts now because we have the server and the browser and the build script. And the depth and the Django server. And sometimes you have to restart the build watch script because it's not always perfect. So it there is definitely a learning curve as as we kind of make our project structure a little more sophisticated than before. Um yeah, and those are great questions, man. Thank you. Um hey, and man. yes, yes. I'm still confused about how uh, the front end and the back end are connected. You said that we'll, we will still use components and pages, right? And, and you also said that uh, we will have some SEO calls, right? So those pages and components will have a bunch of SEO call or like let's say one SEO call per, per, per component or per page. And those SEO call will call the view.py on the Django server basically, right? And exactly. the view.py will render pages. Where are those pages that are the view.py will render? Where are they located? Got it. That is a great question. The views.py will not render pages for those requests. It is going to return JSON data. And then React will get that JSON and React will decide what to do with it. And it will, we will then render whatever we want. So we will render whatever we want inside the component and pages back. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Where the views will be will be sending data like that our React app takes and decides what to do with and how to render it rather than sending. HTML. It's all text, I guess, in one sense, but meant to be handled in very different ways. And I think too that um, once we see some examples with that, it'll be a lot clearer because you've seen those parts. And I think the the, the example will help a lot. Um, but yeah, that's a great question. And you're absolutely right about the flow of, of what's happening with the, the application now. 
the only view function that we have that's going to send HTML back is this one view named index because we need to send back the index.html page that has our React program, the JavaScript running React. And then everything else, just like when your React program talks to a third-party API, it gets back JSON data. That's what our other view functions are going to send back. Okay, um, makes sense. Thank you so much. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Icarus, great question about the browser and React. And it does get confusing. And this is where I would love to do a bit of drawing. And let me see if I can swing it really quickly, in fact, um, and, and get my tablet up and running. If I can't get this working in 30 seconds, I'll switch gears and use Excaladraw or something. But this is where I think having that, that visual aid is, is, is a huge help. Um, let's see here. Bear with me, folks. And we should break for lunch in a moment, too, because I know it's been a very full and productive, I hope, morning. Um, there we go. Let's see here. Uh, this isn't going to work. All right. Uh, let me use Excaladraw. Uh, we're just going to go all the way up here. So here's this, the front end stack. We've got the browser. Uh, we've got the JavaScript virtual machine or Chrome, it's V8. That's what actually is running our JavaScript, right? We're using Node.js, which is running V8 in the server. We've also got in the browser, we've got the DOM. And we know that JavaScript and the DOM can, can talk to each other and can interact in, in certain ways as we've seen. And here's where it gets interesting. In the browser, the browser is running a JavaScript virtual machine, which is just like a fancy word like this console. This is running in the browser's JavaScript virtual machine. That is any JavaScript you write anywhere to run is gonna to have to run inside a JavaScript virtual machine uh, or the JavaScript runtime is also how it's referred to. And then inside that, we're running React JS. And when React JS is running here, the .jsx code, all the stuff we write. React is taking our code and running it and running it inside the JavaScript virtual machine in the browser. And so React is running inside the browser and it talks to the DOM and then all, and then in fact, over here to just kind of complete the whole story without getting too deep into it. Here is Django. And basically our JavaScript is sending HTTP requests and getting HTTP responses back, right? And I didn't put Axios in the picture here, but we could 
put an Axios box inside there as well. And, and this is why I wanted the, uh, the tablet, uh, but this actually works relatively well. There's just uh, no color. So, um, so yeah. does this mean that on the browser's initial call to our Django server, Django is going to send back the compiled React framework as a yes. whole? Yes. All of it. And then our browser, excuse me, our React framework is going to live in the browser DOM. And then it's going it, to be the browser DOM React talking to the Django server from that point forward. Close. In the browser, the JavaScript runtime and the DOM are two separate things. And they can talk to each other. Sure. It, but, I, so, but either way, all of the React is now in the browser and it's not on our server because our yes. server sent them here, here's everything you need to access this set of pages. Very much so, yes. Like that is exactly what we're seeing in this second network request, this JavaScript file that the browser asks for. Oops. This is our entire React application. The whole thing. Yeah. So Django Maybe pushes all the front end stuff to the front end. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 it, it's confusing. Um, it is like we are. It's it's not. You know, we actually have like it's a distributed application. It's two separate things. It's this client server architecture. They talk to each other, and then the browser itself is 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 quite complicated and has many moving parts. Um, but that's exactly right. Basically, anything at the end of the day, React.js is still JavaScript, right? The same way that Django is still Python. The way we're doing things now, all the JavaScript gets run in the browser all the time. None of it ever is getting run or executed on the server side. The only exception to that rule is, is the build command, which is kind of its own separate thing. Um, yeah, Icarus, that was a, a, a great question. And, and I'm sure that it was helpful for a lot of other people as well. Um, and I see oh, another okay. question as well. Oh yeah. yeah that's, um, I would like to add that that's also why you don't want to put any secrets in your code. Um, like, mm. um, any, any API keys, um, passwords, you don't want any of that in your code because it will end up on the actual web. In your React code, yeah, yes, not you could keep that in your Django code though, right? Yeah, yes, it would still be not that secure because the server can be on the internet, and if the server was hacked, then they would be able to get into it and right. see. Because at that point, on. they've got all your Django code also, and they could just exactly. filter through there and see it. Got exactly. It. Okay. But it's yeah, but it's a different type of vulnerability. I'm trying to think of. Uh, I'll just use Google Docs. Um, what was it, uh, controversial, the controversial, I don't know if there's JavaScript running here. What's a website that almost definitely is running JavaScript or React? Um, we can see if there's any Instagram JavaScript. is React, isn't it? That's probably true. Or Facebook. Yeah. yeah Spotify, I, I think too. Spotify is a good one. I, I don't know if I'd have to log into the others. Like, let's take a quick look at Spotify. Somewhere where we see something interactive. Perfect. So this is all interactive stuff. Maybe it's using React, maybe it's not. I have no idea which of these JavaScript files are what, but just like with our application where we're sending JavaScript over from the server, this is the whole Spotify application in JavaScript form, including if it's using React.js, all the JavaScript code running React is here. So I just, and just Zainab to illustrate your point, you know, if a developer at Spotify put 
something secret in some of that JavaScript code. Well, now anyone with a browser who wants to look at it in DevTools can, can see it. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, um, Francisco, your hand is up. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to ask if you're handling a completely front end API and it happens to have some sort of secret key in it, I believe that your React app can create a .env file that you can load with Node. Um, is there any way that you guys could uh, uh, cover that or break that down, or is that just bad practice and would be better to keep it in the back end? I think it's possible. I haven't looked into it yet. Yeah, there's, there's like... It's usually avoid it. Um, and I think the other piece of this is like, there's two pieces that are using environment variables to sort of inject stuff into a JavaScript React application. And then with like an API, like we haven't talked about it a lot, but I'm pretty sure everyone has heard about like a public key versus a private key for authentication. So Francisco, for what you're talking about, like if you have some sort of API token in your front end code, it is probably going to be a public key where the public key is safe for it to be out there. It's kind of like an authentication token and it gives like limited access. Um, and the private key is the part that you really want to keep secret. And, and I would have to Google as well to go into any more depth. And I just hope I haven't gotten something wrong, but that's my, my first thought. Awesome. Thank I don't you. know, Zainab, definitely. No, that's a good question. And Zainab, I just want to check in with you too, if that sort of makes sense or if I totally got on the wrong I'm, path. I'm honestly not sure, um, but that's maybe a question we can ask our, our security um, engineer who's coming to talk to us in a few weeks. That's a great call. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note, we should probably um, break for lunch. Uh, so that we can have lunch and, and return at 1 30. Um, this was awesome. I, I know that we didn't get to uh, building more of this out. Um, and I, I suppose the one thing we should do is we should decide what we're doing after lunch. And actually, Zainab, I could use your help because I think I need to look and see what we have lined up.